So I got another product from Creter. This is the CRP 129i. It is the latest in that line. Right out of the box, it comes in a nice little carrying case. Got some instructions. This one's in English. A quick start guide in various languages. Scanner, along with the diagnostic link cable, as well as a charging cable. This end goes in here, and it connects to a USB that you can put into a power brick. Take that screen cover off. This unit, like all the other units, is constructed pretty well. Feels very solid in the hands. Up top is the power plug-in, the diagnostic link cable plug-in, power button. And on the front, this is Android based, so you've got a couple of the other buttons that you would see on Android devices. It came charged with about 95% battery power. And after the usual setup, you've got the screen should look pretty familiar with the other products that they have. Upgrade wise, it's got no available upgrades because I downloaded and upgraded everything. But if we look at Diagnose, look at all the various models that you can use the scanner on. It's got quite a few of the major manufacturers as well as those like uh, Polestar. Pretty excited to see what this thing will do. The carrying case also has a little loop. I guess to put it on my belt. Stylish accessory? I don't think so. I'm gonna speed up some sections of the video only because you don't want to sit there waiting like I waited for the scanner to communicate. So I'm going to zoom in on the screen but you'll see in the upper right corner the time and how much time is elapsed when I speed up and then slow down. I just want to point out that not all OEMs are friendly to third-party tools like this scanners, especially Chrysler Dodge Jeep. They don't make it very easy, and uh, some of the older vehicles, the automatic VIN lookup will not work, as in the case of my 2000 Jeep Grand Cherokee. So after I do the manual input of the VIN, it's able to communicate. But What's interesting is you'll see that it doesn't show that my Jeep is equipped with a PCM. It's not that it isn't, but that the scanner is not communicating with it. So just be aware that that could happen to your vehicle. As you can see, the scanner generates a health report and there are a few fault codes in my Jeep. You can run an interactive report on the health scan of the vehicle and email it directly from the scanner. And it also retains that report inside the scanner as well. Reading fault codes is pretty simple. You just tap it and it communicates and pulls up the code that it originally found while doing the health scan. There it shows me my code and whether that information is in the scanner. If not, it'll take me to Google. That's pretty cool.
and clearing fall codes couldn't get any easier. The scanner has reset functions which are vehicle specific. I haven't found a way to determine which function is available for the Jeep other than selecting the function. So let's pick the electronic throttle relearn and see if that will reset. Well, the electronic throttle relearn feature does not work on my Jeep. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look at the data stream. See what this thing will show me, see how instantaneous the feedback and the graphing would be. The scanner shows 20 PIDs or parameter identifiers in the data stream supported. After selecting Read Live Data Mode, I'm able to pull up the 20 different PIDs. You can see the various PIDs that you can select all, select, or several, or individual to read the live data. I select it all, and you can see each PID with a value and a graph. The values change as I provide throttle input. Selecting a PID, I can see the graph of the live data. It does automatically rescale depending on how much the value or data moves from the original graph as you can see in the calculated load value graph. I found that the response time of seeing the value or graph change, depending on how much gas I was giving the Jeep, was not instantaneous. It lagged for about a half a second or so. I'm just checking out the other PIDs to get a sense of what's going on. On the uh, engine RPM PID, that was the closest I could get to seeing the response time from the engine to the scanner. Does it really make that much of a difference? Tell me in the comments. Also, I'm not a mechanic. I'm a do-it-yourself, at-home tinkerer. So having a tool like this is pretty nice. Um, it takes a lot out of the guesswork and helps point me in a better direction to resolve a problem. Plus, there's a lot of features and data on the scanner that I'm going to have to learn. So bear with me as I go through this. To get to the next screen, all I have to do is pull up on the screen and it'll load the next screen. It's kind of uh, intuitive, so that was nice to find out, you know, without reading the manual. Overall, I was impressed with the overall data supplied by the scanner. Testing the scanner on my 2006 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3 liter V8 shows that the auto VIN lookup does work. I did have to provide additional information to the scanner. I would imagine that more expensive shop and dealer scanners would have more robust software that would capture all of the information tagged to a VIN than this scanner has the capability to do. 
However, this scanner does support a ton of different makes, models, and years of vehicles, so how much can this little scanner hold? If you paid attention to the clock on the scanner in the upper right corner, you'll see it only took a couple of minutes from hooking up the scanner to getting the health report. By the way, the code for the knock sensors is pretty typical for a 17-year-old truck. I imagine it's got more to do with the wiring than it does the sensors, but at least the scanner told me what it is. You can clear codes right from the health report. Pretty easy. After clearing codes, I'm re-diagnosing the Chevy, and it was a little annoying that I had to go through the AutoVIN lookup and re-enter the additional information to run the diagnosis to see if the fault codes were still there. Maybe I should read the instructions to see if there's a shortcut. Nah. Reading the live data on the Chevy was straightforward. You'll notice there are 28 PIDs on the Chevy versus the 20 PIDs on the Jeep. I didn't do this when the scanner was hooked up to the Jeep, but you can record the live data on the scanner. I had all the PIDs selected and recorded for a little bit. I was able to change the file name and save it to the scanner. Going to the data folder on the home screen, I found the recording file that I had renamed Chevy to replay it. Turns out I can select any of the PIDs to watch. Wow! I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but this is really cool. I'll definitely be using this feature in the future. While there are more features on the scanner, I'll cover the battery voltage check as the last feature on this video. In the upper left corner of the scanner screen, it always shows the current voltage. But using the battery voltage feature, you can graph to see if there are any significant spikes in that voltage. This could help in determining if there are any large parasitic draws to the battery. In conclusion, I really like the capabilities of the scanner. I've got other scanners that are more of the handheld variety, basically OBD2 readers. Um, but for a DIYer like me, this scanner really makes a lot of sense, particularly because I've got a lot of different makes and models, when I say a lot, for you know a household, of uh, different vehicles that uh, if a uh, check engine light comes on or it's acting kind of funny, I am able to plug the scanner in and read whatever fault codes comes up. So that's pretty cool. Whenever I pull up the health report, you're able to email it. So if there's someone more knowledgeable or there's a repair shop that you wanna send it to, maybe they can help you with the diagnosis of your problem. This is also a bi-directional scanner, meaning that it has the ability to communicate with different systems in the vehicles whether it's rolling windows up and down, turning the cooling fan on, um, other special systems and functions. I don't really have any vehicles that I can really uh, test this scanner on, so I didn't show that in the video. Again, uh, this is my own personal opinion, and I've heard others say it, but not all OEMs or original equipment manufacturers are uh, friendly to third-party software and products like this scanner. So in the particular case of my Jeep, whether it's a Chrysler Dodge Jeep thing, it didn't recognize the fact that my Jeep has a PCM or an engine computer. 
Clearly it does, otherwise it wouldn't run. Lastly, um, I went uh, to shop for a used vehicle uh, to replace uh, one that was totaled that uh, belongs to my wife. So I checked out a 2014 Honda Pilot and the dealer basically said, oh, it's clean, you know, it's an honest vehicle. Uh, there was a lot of hail damage, but on the interior, it was in great shape. So I took it for a test drive and everything seemed to be working out real well. So the last step that I did was plug in the scanner and it came up with a couple of fault codes. One was a PCM malfunction and modulator control unit power source circuit low voltage. Oh, that's a mouthful. As well as an ABS fault code that came up. And I showed them that on my scanner. And they basically put them back on their heels. Uh, they didn't really know what to do with that. So I pass on that vehicle. Um, on another vehicle, uh, which we actually ended up purchasing, uh, was a 2011 Lexus RX 350. And the code that came up on that one was P0356, or an ignition coil F primary secondary circuit. And what happened on that particular one was it was an old code stored in the computer that wasn't cleared. So we actually got a very clean vehicle uh, for a good price. So I wonder how many times have I actually shopped for a used vehicle where I didn't have a scanner? Um, well, since I've had a scanner, I've always taken a scanner with me. But prior to that, it's a crapshoot. You don't really know the condition. If there is no check engine light, they could have cleared that, right? But there could be all these underlying problems with a vehicle. So having a scanner really helps me in my confidence in purchasing a vehicle. Thanks for watching this video. If you have experience with this scanner or the line of launch Creter scanners, let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you like about them. Tell me what you don't like about them. And uh, if you're interested in this product, I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do have an Amazon link for the product in the description box. I will earn a small commission if you purchase with that link. So I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. If you like this content, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks again.